I've just realized that I'm st I've started doing the whole show on mute. Welcome again. Let me do that all over again. Welcome to the Latte Firm for a late night latte. Wow, how embarrassing is that? I've only been doing this for almost two years. Uh, hopefully you guys can hear me now. <laughs> Oh, wow. Well. Um, basically, I was just saying, Arsenal are back in the Champions League. It's Bayern Munich coming to the Emirates tomorrow night. And I am going to do a show. We're going to talk about the fixture. We're going to talk about what, it, you know, what Mikel Arteta might do. It's a big occasion. We're at Europe's top table once again. I also have a roast beef, an English mustard and tomato sandwich that I'm going to uh, devour on this show with some tortilla chips on the side. Um, and it's going to be a chilled session. Get involved in the chat. I can't believe it. I was on mute. Look at all of you guys. Look, Oysen was in the house. Mute. Shh, no sound. Uh, Etienne Smith, mute FK. Uh, Fabes, Fabes, your mic is off. Oh, wow. How embarrassing. But Trevor De Vega said, good to see you, FK. I've only been doing this for almost two years. Can you believe that? Uh, hopefully you guys can hear me now. Yes, 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 you can. Right. Welcome. It's a chilled show, okay? We're going to talk about the Champions League. It's a massive game tomorrow night at the Emirates. We're top of the league. Good vibes. Good vibes around the club. I hope you guys have had a wonderful day from wherever you're watching. It's just gone 8pm in the UK, of course. Um, good start to the week. I can't think of anything apart from football. I can't think of anything apart from Arsenal. And I can't think of anything apart from tomorrow night. I've been working today. Been productive, but just, you know, it's how difficult is it to concentrate? I can't like fixate on anything, you know, my, I'm, I'm in meetings, I'm on calls, I'm listening to people, I'm reading emails and in the back of my mind, I'm thinking about Arteta and Havertz and what we're going to have, uh, yeah, what we're going to have tomorrow. Fantastic. Right. I'm going to bring someone in to save me, <laughs> to save this awful start to the show. Uh, right. Here we go. It's, uh, Wayne, how are you, man? Bloody hell, you didn't even give me a, a intro or anything. I wasn't expected to come on straight away. What what's going on tonight? You start me, on you you're having a bit of a mess. I'll tell you what's happened, mate. I started the show and I was on mute for about two minutes. <laughs> yeah, and I was watching. <laughs> All right, okay. <laughs> and uh I hadn't realized, I don't know what happens with the microphone, but there we are. That's the that's the that's the live show business. How are you, my friend? You good? Are you excited? Uh phew. I'm, 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 what, what's the what's the meme of that the West Ham fan who was on the Apprentice or, or whatever it was? I'm I'm a bit nervous. I'm a bit jittery. I don't, I don't get nervous, <laughs> but I'm feeling a bit nervous. I'm getting a bit jittery. I, I, I'm feeling it a little bit. Okay, I'm feeling it a little bit. Tomorrow is massive. Like it's massive. Not not for just like the context of the season, but the fact that we've not been there for so long. It's massive as we're lucky enough to be match going fans. It's massive for us to be able to go there. People that are going to stay up around the world. It's massive to think that this is potentially some of our fan base's first live opportunity of watching Arsenal win a knockout Champions League game. Like, it's been it that is. long. It's that long. It's been a long time since Arsenal have been in the Champions League. It's been a long time since we've been in the quarterfinals, actually since 2009-10. So almost 15 yeah. years, uh, which is phenomenal. But we're back in the big time, baby. And it's Bayern Munich who come to town. Bayern Munich who've not been having the best of seasons in Germany. We'll talk about that shortly. But a warm welcome to you, Wayne. And thanks for saving Thank me. You. I cannot believe. It's good. It's cannot good. believe. You, need, you, you need saving sometimes, FK. I mate, I tell you what, I, I just, oh, I cannot believe what's happened. Uh, right. <laughs> Lou says, all the gear, but no idea. Absolutely. Yeah, there's, a, there's also a few people just saying, don't go to Old Trafford. Randomly, just you know, please don't go to Old Trafford. Um, my movement we, is gaining momentum, FK. My movement is gaining yeah, momentum. We will talk about that. I even forgot to send Dobbo a link. He's going to join us in about half an hour to talk <laughs> about his thoughts. What a mess I am. I've just basically, I've logged off work. I've made myself a gorgeous, gorgeous oh, beef sandwich with uh, some tortillas on the side. I'm about to go to town. Uh, nice. Let's uh, catch some of the uh, the comments. Uh, Johnny Wonderling says, Hi, FK and Wayne. Been catching up on the shows, but for the first time I've been able to catch you live for a while. Johnny, it's great to see you. Love your smiley face as well. Hope you're smiling tomorrow. Uh, Afsar says, I love muting my boss at work. <laughs> yeah. It, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I agree with you, Afsar. Hope you've had a good day at work. Rice, uh, Rice says, the, Starbucks, the Star Bar snack review is goated. Yes, I did a star bar review. Thanks to my friend Flanny once uh, live on uh, Twitter. And it was viewed like 30,000 times. Uh, Lou Weed says, good job. We love you. Thank you so much. That's very kind of you. Hari, just 
emphasizing just don't don't go to old trafford uh right uh wayne there is no better way to set the scene than by sharing the slides and the first slide is quite a sexy one it's showtime the quarterfinals are upon us Mikel. oh look at him just look at him how are you feeling on the eve of such a gargantuan game tomorrow wayne i'm excited because we're meant to be here it's been so long since we've been here and this team is ready for this occasion this team is ready for this moment and i'm nervous because like you said Bayern munich are, are not having the best of times really at the moment and for some strange reason somehow we're going into this game as favorites like can you imagine the last time when we played against Bayern munich if i said to you arsenal are, are favorites against them across two legs it just would it wouldn't have wouldn't have crossed our minds but the way that we're playing right now the way that they're playing right now the the way that the squad is just performing from 1 to 25 all throughout it's just a real real brilliant time to be an arsenal fan and this could really put us on the map but not in terms of casual fans or rival fan base i don't care about that it could put us on the map in terms of progression it could put us on the map in terms of belief we've got seven cup finals left in the league potentially another five in the champions league to do something something special and all i keep thinking back to is that manchester city performance a couple of weeks ago everyone was complaining about it being boring everyone was complaining about the fact that we didn't go there all i saw was a blueprint to beat Bayern munich get a one nil two goal lead head to munich and put in that same defensive effort that we put in against manchester city and no matter how many goals harry kane has scored in a in a in a, a, a farmer's league let's call it what it is every time he's come up against gabriel he's he's seen nightmares he's got nightmares it's ptsd for him all over again it is indeed look eric says two nights uh in a row for live shows yeah this is getting through work today being brutally honest with you <laughs> just saying just don't go to old traffic it's gonna crack me up um and i thought you know what i'm so excited and i'm so alone because my wife and kids are still overseas that i thought i want to go and engage with the community and see what's going on and there are 500 of you watching live already which is insane so do get involved in the chat do get involved in the socials and of course drop a like on the video it's a massive help to the channel um super chats also very very gratefully received um afc max says uh, at dobbo 0107 uh, hello fk and everyone at the latte firm can i request a four-person panel also my snack check uh, an elite bowl of strawberries with melted chocolate as a dip i have some fresh strawberries that i bought from mns this afternoon and i'm going to do exactly the same tonight i think max fantastic i love that shout um everyone praising wayne uh, uh chan's in the house saying evening gents even to you chan my friend i've been loving your photography there's a photo that he posted of uh, gabriel and saliba holding hands with rice just ahead of him it's a masterpiece an absolute masterpiece chan um and chan re reply in the chat with your uh, with your handle on x so people can go over to that and see that um Mikel's in good a good mood because like you said wayne we are top of the league we've got a lot to be confident about i know it's the first time that we're playing bayern munich in a long time uh, and let me uh, bring back some pain to the arsenal memories uh, <laughs> sorry it's going to be a short short-lived uh, slide this one uh, I don't know why I did it. In fact, when I was putting the Arsene Wenger photo in, I just wanted to start crying. But our head-to-heads under Arsene Wenger uh, were quite painful against Bayern Munich. Do you think this has anything to do with tomorrow's game? Is this just too long ago? Uh, no, I think the I think that it would have some sort of, on the Munich side of it. I think they'll positively sort of re refer to it and think back on it. But I think that that's kind of them clutching at straws, given the way that their season's going. I think that we're just a different beast right now. And look, I'm not I'm not going to say that it's going to be comfortable. It's a Champions League quarterfinal, two leg against a juggernaut in this competition. But you can't look past the way that they've played all season. It's not a blip. It's not a sort of five game sample size where they're off form. This has been Bayern Munich all year. And the way that Leverkusen has just dismantled them this season is a real, real boost for me as an Arsenal fan because... Bayern Munich are struggling. They've got a manager who isn't going to be there next season. 
We don't know what the player's mentality is in terms of are we playing for the boss? Are we playing for our futures? You've got a lot of, of conversation already about players like Kimmich wanting to leave. And these are Bayern born, bred, made superstars in that team. So something backstage that we don't know about is just going wrong. And the weekend, especially for Bayern Munich, the Bayern Munich, to go 2 0 up against a newly promoted side in the middle, middle of the Bundesliga table. For them to chuck it away and lose three two, and the amount and I watched that game. We're lucky enough um, over, in, over in the UK, we get a lot of Bundesliga coverage on Sky Sports, so I've managed to watch a lot of Bayer Leverkusen and Bayern Munich this season. They are wide open. They've got some dangerous players going forward. It's going to be it's going to be beautiful seeing Nabry back in some parts, but painful as well because they've got the capacity to cause us trouble defensively. But on 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 our end, going forward, they are wide open, and we're heading into a quarterfinal game in the Champions League, where yes, we should respect and somewhat consider Bayern Munich the name of the team. But the name of the team, Bayern Munich, that's history. Like this graphic shows, they're not playing anywhere near as good. They don't have the quality of player that they used to, and they don't have the amount of game changes that that we saw in those back to back to back five ones. Back to back five ones. It was just so, so sad. And I remember that home tie on the 7th of March because my daughter was born the night before. And I remember, you know, watching it in hospital and I just wanted to cry, man. I just wanted I'm to surprised. cry. It was such a bad defeat. Go on. I'm surprised you weren't going to tell us, oh, yeah, I remember watching it in the stadium because I left <laughs> like you did, like you did Mauritius, like you I'll did be, I'll be honest this holiday you. last year. <laughs> I'll be honest with you, I was so close to leaving the hospital. But the only reason why I didn't is because the sister said that after 8 p.m. you can stay, but once you leave, you can't come back until 8 a.m. And the idea of going to the Emirates was so sweet on my mind, but I'm so glad that I didn't. Uh, just well going to pause for a second. I'm going to bring up the league table, the Bundesliga. But before we do that, thank you so much, AFC Max, for your generous contribution to the channel. It is greatly appreciated, sincerely. Uh, he says uh, it's, a, it's a repeat of his first comment saying that he wants to request a four-person panel. We're going to have lots of people on tonight. Uh, he says his snack check, of course, is a reminder, an elite bowl of strawberries and melted chocolate. And he's predicting a 3-0 win for tomorrow. 3-0 win for tomorrow. Uh, Max, I really appreciate that, and I appreciate you. Let's bring up the, um, the, the Bundesliga table, Wayne, if I may. I'm just going to bring that up courtesy of Bundesliga.com, and hopefully you'll be able to see that uh, one second now. Really surprising. Really surprising. At the start of the season, um, you know, Xabi Alonso was obviously at Bayer Leverkusen. Granit Xhaka moved to Bayer Leverkusen. Obviously, I had the foresight to, to, to know that Granit would propel them to a title challenge. Um, but Bayern Munich have been so successful in Germany over the years. You know, it's been a, a one-team league. And there they are in second place, 16 points behind an unbeaten Bayer Leverkusen. Bayer Leverkusen, of course, one game away now from winning the Bundesliga title. It's unimaginable what's happened to them. I mean, this is an almighty failure on Thomas Tuchel's part. Yes. Yes, it is. Especially when you consider the amount of money they spent on Harry Kane. He was meant to go there to be a difference, not only for the Bundesliga, because they've won that, what, 10 years in a row, I think, eight years in a row, something like that. But he was meant to be the game changer in the Champions League. Uh, he was meant to be the crown jewel to this 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 Bayern Munich team to get them over the Champions League edge. And the biggest surprise to me is not the fact that they're in second, because look, you have to give a huge amount of credit to Bayer Leverkusen. You have to give a huge amount of credit to their season. Like you said, not only are they unbeaten in the league, they're unbeaten across all competitions. All competitions. That's phenomenal. So there's every possibility Bayer, uh, Bayer Leverkusen could have still been top of this Bundesliga. The biggest surprise is look how close they are to not finishing second. They're in second by goal difference ahead of Stuttgart. And that is, that's just crazy to me. The, a team with the resources of Bayern Munich, the quality of Bayern Munich are in this position. And look, we have to keep our wits about us. We absolutely do. Tuchel is a Champions League winning manager. They've got a bunch of Champions League winning players. They've got someone like Thomas Muller, who may not have been the Thomas Muller that we saw in some of those demolitions in the past, but he's street, street smart. 
knows how to get jobs done. And they've got like guys like Neuer, Kimmich, people who have been there, done that. And then they've got quality with the likes of Nabry, Sane, uh, Kingsley Coman, who's won leagues everywhere he's been. Um, they've got players who can can hit us for for six if we're not got our wits about us. But we're so good this season that it's. I've said it time and time again. It's hard to know how you break us down. It's hard. It's difficult to know where their goals come from and the way that Bayern Munich have been defending this season. We should create a lot of opportunities. And it's just on us to put one or two away. I'm not expecting a cricket score. It's never going to be that in the Champions League quarterfinals. Play the game and we'll be fine. Play the occasion and we'll be very nervous. Bailey Wilson says, I saw FK call Wayne 45 years old last night. Just wanted to clarify that he's definitely not any older than 30, right? I am older than 30. I'm 33. (laughs) But I really appreciate that. I'm not 45. I'm nowhere near. (laughs) See, but, Bailey's um, nice to you, but not to me. Yeah. Listen, I gotta say, I was I was mocking Wayne for 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 being a grown adult and watching WrestleMania, but I gotta be honest, man. I saw a little clip and when the don't Undertaker came on, we don't, and when, we the, don't when the you. bell went <laughs> and the rock was on 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 the on the ring or whatever bloody hell it's called. Oh mate. I, it it did remind me of my childhood, but uh but there we are. Listen, Wayne, uh just to bring back the uh, the misery, doom and gloom, the head to heads before you sort of leave us. We have lost our past three games at Bayern Munich with the same scoreline, of course, 5-1. Um, oh, 5-1, 10-2 on aggregate. That's pain. Tomorrow is, for me, about revenge. You know, th- this is an uh, this is an unfinished story. And what would you do if you're Mikel Arteta in terms of team selection and, and leave us with a score prediction? Team selection, I think, is pretty straightforward, apart from maybe two positions at left back and in the front three. Um, although saying that, my outside thought is that Thomas Partey is going to start tomorrow. Ooh. I think that he starts considering he didn't get any minutes against Brighton, played, what, 66 against Luton the week before, and Jorginho's played the full 90. Uh, it wouldn't shock me if, with the space that Bayern Munich leave and just the capacity that Partey has to break down defences and play through the lines and get Erdegaard involved... It wouldn't shock me if Thomas Partey started the game. I think nine of the, the starting eleven picked themselves. If if you if you consider Thomas Partey starting eleven, you've got Ben White hundred percent starting, David Raya, Saliba, Gabriel, Saka will start, I think, um, and then obviously Declan Rice will start, Erdegaard will start, and I think Kai Havertz starts as well. The two positions are on that left hand side, and that left back and left wing. For me, I hope and feel like Martinelli has been reserved somewhat for these occasions because he is perfect for Champions League football. He's the outlet you need. He's a uh, he's a defend uh, he's a defender's nightmare, and it doesn't matter who Bayern Munich play at right back if they've got Eric Dyer in at centre back and Delict as well, who I think is a quality defender, but he's not the quickest. You don't want to see Gabriel Martinelli. So I'm hoping that Gabriel Martinelli starts. That's the direction that I would go, um, and my front three would be Martinelli. Havertz and Saka. But I hear the argument for Gabriel Jesus. He was in the press conference today, which is normally a, a sign of somewhat yeah. that they're going to get some some key minutes. Um, but not only that, he's got a beautiful Champions League record. He's got a phenomenal Champions League record and he's a danger. At left back, we were having the discussion about Zinchenko and Mikel Arteta seems to trust him implicitly. He seems to trust him regardless of the situation. I am not I'm not as trusting in Zinchenko, especially defensively. Um so I wouldn't be inclined to pick him for this one. I think between Kivior and Tomiyasu, Tomiyasu is the better defender for me and a bit better on the ball. I love Kivior. I think post Fulham he's been phenomenal. And I think it will be really harsh for him not to be selected and him to be, if you want to call it dropped or whatever. But Tommy Asu is just the better defender and he's the better all-round player. The the issue with Tommy Asu is always about injuries. And a lot of the trouble that Bayern Munich are probably going to cause us, if any, are going to come from wide areas. And I trust Ben White to get the job done regardless who starts on that left wing, if it will be Sane or Komen. I imagine that Nabry will start on the right wing. And I want Tommy Asu there because I know that Tommy Asu can shut down any type of winger. Um and then in the middle, 
like I said, Gabriel and Saliba versus Harry Kane, that's something that we've seen and I'm looking forward to it again because Gabriel's had his number nine times out of ten. Score prediction from me, I think we win. I think we win 2-0. Clean I'm going to go for 2-0. Well. Yeah, I think we keep a clean sheet and I think we force Bayern to come out in German Germany and play a different game to what they wanted to. If we can head to Germany with, even if a one-goal lead, even if it's a one-goal lead, I'm perfectly fine with that. Because like I said, reference that Manchester City defensive performance. If we go to Germany with that same concentration, that same quality, same level defensively, we're not conceding in Germany. Unless we do some sort of freak nonsense, which is... Listen, it's happened in the past, but I'm going to go with 2-0, FK. Fair enough. Uh, by the way, uh, V Vlad. Is it V Vlad or is it V V Lad? I've just wondered. I, I was watching Rory Talks Ball, his channel, and he was addressing you as V V Vlad. Uh, anyway, listen, v, m- let me know in the chat. He says, good evening, FK and Wayne. Late to the party, a pleasant late night surprise. Yes, it was a very impromptu late night latte. I'm so excited about the game. We couldn't help but talk about it. Um, if anybody wants to follow Wayne, he is available on X at Wayne's World 20 underscore. Also my co-host of the post-match phone-ins on a match day, which you will get tomorrow after the game. As late as it might be, my friend. We will come back, and if we have to go at midnight, we will go at midnight. I cannot wait for that. <laughs> Wayne, thank you. I appreciate, I appreciate you. It. Enjoy the night, and I will see you tomorrow at the Emirates for our traditional uh, greetings from, from peasant level to club level. <laughs> Take care. And um, before I go, anyone, it's uh, obviously Eid on uh, Wednesday, is it? Mm. Yeah, you're, I know you're set, you'll be celebrating. hope everything is blessed and, and happy for all you and yours and anyone that's, that's celebrating on during the week. That's very kind of you, Wayne. Thank you, my friend. I will see you tomorrow. Take care. See you tomorrow. Take care. Bye for now. Right. Lots of talk about team news and who might be coming in. So let's bring in our next guest. And it's George. How are you, man? You're on mute as well. I started this show on mute for two minutes and everyone <laughs> caned me for it. And I'm glad it's not just me. How are you, my man? It's been a long time. I'm brilliant, mate. I'm brilliant. It's, I'm happy to be here. I can't wait to talk. There's so much exciting things going on with the club right now. I just have a brilliant energy about the fan base and i feel like you know you have it as well and it's just there's something here there's something growing and i can't wait to to talk about it well listen i've got some painful images on screen we were just talking about our head-to-head record against uh, the last time we Marcin Wenger, who of course yeah. missed out on Champions League glory back in 2006. Many of you won't be old enough to remember that. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's been a lot of talk about team selection. So let me let me bring this up. Um, this is an image that I sort of cobbled together thinking that this is what I think Arteta might do tomorrow. I've got a feeling he's going to he's going to go Zinchenko at left back. But let's talk about left back position, George. Um, what do you, I mean? Well, actually, no. First of all, I've, how rude of me. I didn't really ask you. How are you, how are you feeling about tomorrow? I mean, you must be I, the smile on your face, the excitement, and the energy that you're bringing. You must be really looking forward to this, especially as a tactica. Mate, I just I just feel like this is what we've wanted. When we talk about standards and we talk about the quote unquote process, these nights, I live for them. And, you know, a lot of people start to ask me, okay, are you feeling nervous? No, I'm not nervous. I'm just excited. It awakens something inside of me when I have a test like this that I can sit there and say, how does this team compare that I believe is among the best teams in Europe? How can I fare against some of the best clubs in Europe? And that's ultimately what we want to do here. Sport is about getting to this level. And I just believe that there's no way to show your progression more than how you are against the best teams in the world. So I'm I'm very excited about it. And I think there's an opportunity where we're looking ironically at a Bayern team that maybe have fallen from grace, certainly, and some of the narratives have switched. You talk about those painful head-to-heads against Bayern. I remember those. School was very tough getting through that. But I think, generally speaking, when we're looking at the types of teams that we're facing right now, this Bayern squad and this Arsenal, ironically, we're very Bayern of old, and you could argue Bayern are very Arsenal of old in terms of the current matchup, which is very exciting. It is indeed. We were just talking about the Bundesliga and how Bayern have just fallen away, but, you know, Bear fucks to Bayer Leverkusen, who've been absolutely outstanding today and completely unbeaten in all competitions. AFC Max, thank you again for such a generous contribution to the channel. I really appreciate that, and I appreciate you. He says, FK, it was worse for me when I travelled to the Allianz Arena and watched my team hold five, as George just mentioned. I will say this again, not sure if I said it on the channel, but we can win the double. If not now, in the next 18 months. Max, thank you for that. I appreciate it. I love the energy and the optimism. 
Um, George, we were just talking about the sort of lineups and what Wayne would do. We talked about Thomas Partey coming in. He says for mm -hmm. him, the decisions are to be made at left back and left, left wide forward. So let's get your thoughts on the team selection. I think those are the three positions that I think are up for up for debate. So look, I think it's fair to say that David Raya will start in goal. I think we all want Ben White, despite that that knee uh, strap he's got, got on. Mm -hmm. uh, Saliba and Gabriel, of course, two monsters, colossal pairing at centre-back. What do you think Mikel would do at left-back? What would you like to do at left-back for tomorrow? Yeah, I think uh, analysing this Bayern team, uh, they are a team that rely on outlets and they're not going to be the Bayern of old in terms of uh, that traditional pace and power in the middle. They actually avoid the middle and they very much struggle with central progression as a team. And so I think some of the tactics they might employ uh, was actually a preparation for Arsenal as much as the game that they most recently lost, which was a 4-2-4 kind of build up. And when you start to look at what makes Bayern great right now, because they have such big issues in build up, they probably go long and early into the channels to hit their wide outlets, which are understandably world-class. You're looking at a winger depth of essentially Kingsley Komen, Serge Gnabry, who's in brilliant form. You know, Leroy Sonny has just come back. So I'm just starting to think, you look at those wide outlets and you start to say, who in our squad has that 1v1 wild card that you know can lock down the middle of the park? And I do tend towards the man on your screen right now and Tommy Asu. I think that in terms of particularly the type of wingers that we're going to be facing, and especially down the right-hand side, I'm predicting a Leroy Sane who had done the press conference to start, and as well a Joshua Kimmich to start from right back to come into midfield and have a little bit of that dynamic where I think we're going to be pulled wide. And I think Sane, in terms of wide 1v1 ability, that is an opportunity for Zinchenko to have a weakness. And I even argue Kivior, who has been brilliant lately, when he is pulled into wide spaces, he's not as comfortable in terms of opening up and shifting his body. And I just think Tom Yasu gives us a level of solidity to clamp down one of the really big outlets that Bayern will have down that side. Uh, Alexander from the different knock, your, your friend Alexander <laughs> is in the chat. He says, my two boys with a teary face and a hearts in eyes emoji. Now, he could be talking about Saliba and Gabriel. He could be talking about <laughs> Kivior and Tomiyasu, but I'm hoping he's talking about me and you, George, and you're getting a lot of love in the chat. Um, can I just ask you a slightly different George, uh, question, George, yeah. before we move on to the midfield? So, look, Tomiyasu for you, Tomiyasu for me, I think Kivior's been fantastic. You know, he's come in and he's done a job. I felt so calm and secure with him playing at left back, and I know there was that disaster when we played him at Fulham and we tried to sort of invert and the players weren't comfortable. You could see they were sort of avoiding passing to him. Like it was that bad. Yeah. And of course we lost that game. But I think ever since he's been asked to just do a, a very safe and sound, you know, more orthodox left back, he's done really well. And when Zinchenko came back into fitness, I thought it was a bit harsh on him. Now, just on Zinni, mm. he gets a lot of criticism from Arsenal fans. I think he knows that he's probably not the most sound defensively. You know, he know we, we know that Tommy Asu, as you've just articulated, is much better 1v1. I would trust Tommy Asu with my life, either on the right or the left, if he was up against a really aggressive wide player. Hmm. But Zinchenko's asked to do that, isn't he? Now, Mikel Arteta asks him to invert, to tuck into midfield and to go so high up and really help us with our attacking play that, like, you know, he's going to leave space in behind all the time. And he knows he's not defensively the best. So, you know, there's not much he can do, really. So is the criticism warranted or do you think it's a little bit harsh? I mean, I think to a certain degree, it's it's a byproduct of the environment of his role, right? You're going to inevitably leave quite a bit of space behind you. But I do think there are some valid criticisms in terms of his defensive ability when caught out 1v1. And so I think those that's where the frustration lies. So on one hand, you acknowledge the role may mean you're naturally going to leave Gabrielle to defend those wide channels, which is absolutely true. And then on the other hand, you start to see some of like the issues against sporting, for example, against Marcus Edwards. And then you start to think back about some of those 1v1 moments that Zinchenko does have, and you start to say he should really be doing better for somebody of his experience down there. I think really made Oddly, I'm going to say that Odegaard's role this season is really the biggest impact on this. And the reason is because we see him dropping into that pivot much more with Declan Rice in terms of dictating the middle third proceedings. And so is our team as reliant on Zinchenko to provide that central progression as it was last season? And is that role of inverting from left back as reliant this season on our ability to progress centrally? And I kind of argue not necessarily. And so Zinchenko himself is perhaps in caught between two minds in terms of losing his particular influence on this team, where 
I will end on this. I feel as though that there are Zinchenko games, and I do feel that there's going to be games for another type of fullback. I don't think that he gets um, you know, the praise that he does. And I think a lot of people, when you don't see a player, you lose what his special qualities were. And so against a low block, say against a Luton, say against a team like an Everton that have really pinned in deep, I think that Zinchenko is a brilliant option to come in and really help out. But then when the game is stretched and you're looking to have powerful runners in a game of transitions, which I expect Bayern are a powerful team, that's maybe not the game for Zinchenko. So you do need to balance maybe some of the commentary where we can understand his use, but at the same time, he's a very specific role. So perhaps as we're starting to look in terms of, is he going to be plan A in the same way that he was last season? Not so much, but that doesn't mean he's a player that's useless. As Rancid Pumpkin says, there are games for Zinni but tomorrow ain't one of them. And listen, I, I agree with you, Rancid. I know it sounds horrible to, to sort of criticise our players, but I think Mikel has built a squad of players who have their different strengths and skill sets and uses. And for me, Tommy Asu is the most defensively sound player of the lot. As we move up the pitch, let's talk about the midfield. I mean, look, Jorginho has really impressed this season. Declan Rice, of course, an absolute monster of a player, potentially, arguably, uh, our one, you know, definitely one of our players of the season, potentially the player of the season. Um, what are you doing in midfield, George? Because Jorginho is not as dynamic or as mobile or as athletic as Thomas Party. Party, we've seen glimpses of him in the last sort of you know two three weeks. He had a couple, he had a few minutes away at Sheffield United. He played uh, an hour or so against Luton. I love the way he breaks the lines. You know, his legs just appear out of nowhere. And it's, it's a partnership that we all craved, wasn't it? You know, at the start of the season, we all wanted to see Party and Rice playing midfield together alongside Erdegaard, but it hasn't been the case. What are you doing tomorrow? It's difficult because I actually had this debate, you know, in several podcasts where it's almost like we've got a lot of injured players coming back, mate, that fundamentally we're asking questions. Do we go with past history or who's in form? You can make an argument. Kivior versus Tommy Asu is this exact case. Jorginho, by the way is this exact case with Thomas Partey. For me, uh, to get off the fence, I think, and I look at kind of the recent performances of Jorginho, who I think has had a little bit of trouble in the last couple of games in terms of really exerting that influence. And so when you're starting to pick a lineup, and I can't hide away from it, where you're looking at a big physical team, I look at the security that Thomas Partey gives us in a defensive sense, but also especially if I'm asking for Tommy Asu to be a left back, I really need to see somebody that will provide me with that real vertical passing between the lines. And I think Jorginho gives you a ball over the top, but he is more of a conservative option that knows when to up the tempo, but can be safe at times. And I think we have enough players here and enough transition control in the back line with a Tommy Asu that you can afford somebody to be a bit more daring be a bit more willing to provide that vertical thrust that I think this team at times has lacked. I mean, I think entry into zone 14 has been something throughout this season that Arsenal have slowly worked to improve. But I think that Tom, like Thomas Partey gives you a level of bravery between the lines that I think you can afford to have when you have a back line of center backs as well as Declan Rice. And so it, 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 does, it does seem like for me that understanding of, Thomas Partey and Odegaard is something that is special that I think, especially if you have an Odegaard that's going to drop in at times and we've got the running power of Declan Rice, it's a beautiful compliment in the biggest of games, especially against a, a team that is quite physical. And so I just think that this maybe again is not a Jorginho type game. There's going to be games for Jorginho and there's going to be games for Thomas Partey, for example, against Aston Villa with no Douglas Louise, I'd look at that as a potential Jorginho game. But then when I'm talking about Bayern Munich, who, again, I did say they will go long and early, I think they're going to escape the middle of the park. So you need to have somebody that's able to hold that high line effectively and able to control transitions, because I think Bayern Munich will avoid the midfield while Arsenal will want to try to play through them. Here's a question for you um, before you sort of give us your predictions and where you think the game might be won or lost. Space Time 34 says, George, would you put party to mark the Bayern pivot in our press so that we can have Rice patrol the spaces between the lines? Musiala is giving me nightmares. <laughs> Thanks for the question, Space Time. Brilliant, brilliant question. And um, thank you so much for it. I think um, Musiala is probably one of my favorite non-Arsenal talents. I absolutely love the boy. And you know what? He is very smart to mention him because I think game-breaking wise, 
he is one of two or three players on the Bayern team that I am absolutely afraid of. And I think he can break anybody between the lines. Really? I would I I think he is just one of the best half turn specialists in world football. And I think if you allow him time to dictate, you're going to be in trouble. And he's one of the few players that I think can offer something for Bayern between the lines to aim at and to get them going to release their outlets. So to actually answer the question, I think that we should absolutely go in towards a man-to-man press, but I would like Declan Rice to be the man very much in the sense of how we use Declan Rice in the community shield against Rodri, where I would like him to follow Musiela because he's their only central line-breaking option. So I think I would have him in the pivot. I would have Thomas Partey be the deeper of the two between the two players more often. And of course, we know that these are binary. I think on both sides, you're going to have them alternate roles. But in general, I think Thomas Partey should anchor and we should have kind of Declan Rice a little bit more ahead to provide that um, that intensity in the press. But then Thomas Partey can back it up in terms of sweeping any kind of loose balls. And we, of course, we have our four center back lineup that we've been talking about to kind of complement this. Official says Musiala is one of those players that can manage that the manager story can't think of a solution for. Uh, Jack Thomas in the chat says party and Tommy Asu, the big boys for the big games. Uh, another question here from uh, Alexander at the different knock. I agree with the party pick. Are either of you concerned about his sharpness? I found him a little more loose and negative than normal. I'll go first on that, George. I am. I'm really, you know, I was surprised that he started against Luton and I was a little bit nervous because as good as he is, and we've seen glimpses of brilliance from him, he did not look fit in that run out against Sheffield United. When he came on, it was like he was just jogging. He went for a jog in the park and it was just like, Mikel, what are you doing? Uh, He did uh, show moments of quality Um, up at City. I think he came on for a few minutes towards the end. That was a bit nerve wracking for me. I thought, you know, what the hell is he doing? If he's fit, he's fantastic. But I am concerned about his sharpness. And I think tomorrow is probably, you know, just it's a massive game, just maybe a week or two too soon. I, I need to see him complete 90. But then lots of people in the chat have been talking about start party and finish Jorginho. You know, this season has been about starters and finishers. What do you think of Alex's question? I think it's a valid question, and I think that there's definitely some on-the-ball concerns, but I think we know this type of Thomas Partey. Like, I think Thomas Partey is one of those players, at least on the ball, um, needs to have games and minutes inside in order to show his true potential with. And I think at his worst, I look at, let's say there's a bad Thomas Partey. What are you getting with a bad Thomas Partey? I think you're getting somebody that's defensively aware, that's able to run, at least more than Jorginho. If I look at, say, a bad Jorginho, what does that game give me? Well, it gives me somebody that maybe can't run at the races, but will give me some security on the ball. And I think if you're going to ask yourself what type of game will this Emirates game be, you have to ask yourself, will Bayern try to play through you or will they try to go long? And that for me is really the question. So then I ask myself, okay, between Jorginho and Thomas Partey, who can anchor best against long balls in the channels? Who can help us in those situations the most? And I lean towards Thomas Partey for that particular game state. I think the idea to end with a Jorginho is definitely the kind of maturity that I would be looking for, particularly when you start strong with this man-to-man press. I would like to put Bayern on the back foot early. I think the more minutes Bayern have at nil-nil, the more confidence they grow. They do have a prestige in this competition. And I think both players that we're talking about have a prestige in the competition, so you're not losing against that. But the one thing I would like to do is to put Bayern in trouble and put Bayern under pressure. And I just think if we're looking to press and we're looking to press high, I think Partey does a better job of that than Jorginho. And I think towards the end of the game, if we wanted to maybe control possession a bit more and close the game out, you're looking for that type of player and you're looking for Jorginho to do that. Well, come on then, my friend. I know you're excited. I know you're looking forward to this game. There's going to be so much analysis in you as a tactical expert. You're going to thrive and you're going to be in your element. Um, But what do you think the score will be tomorrow? What's your prediction? Oh, my goodness. Um, Difficult to call because I think there's just so many factors. I mean, Arsenal under the lights quarterfinals is not something that we can say for almost 10 years. I mean, you know, it's just so it's brilliant. I mean, it's fun. But at the same token, you're basically battling what is one of the best teams in Europe against one of the teams that are struggling the most for form. And um, I think that you're also looking at a team that are wounded. um, And that makes it dangerous. I think that I have said before, and I will stick with my scoreline then, I think it'll be a 3-1 Arsenal win. Very optimistic. 
but I think that what's going to happen is we're going to put them under pressure. And I think that it's going to be a game of transitions. And I think with that happening, you're going to see an arsenal that are going to be clinical in both boxes, which is something that we always haven't done. So I am going to go with 3-1. Alexander, uh, <laughs> bantering you there saying, he said 3-1 earlier. Don't bottle it, George. I can imagine Alexander saying that. Uh, listen, George, it's been fantastic to hear from you. It's been a while since you've been on Latte Firm. I know you've been very, very busy. I hope you are well. Uh, if anybody wants Thank to follow you. George on X, he's available at George V underscore AFC. He can also be found on the different knock with Alexander on the instant reaction um, videos, which are awesome. So, George, thank you. Enjoy tomorrow's game. We will okay. speak to you very, very soon. Sounds brilliant. Have the best and happy eat. I know that you're celebrating. Anybody else thank in the you, chat that is doing that, uh, all the all the best of blessings. So thank you very much. Thank you so much, man. Look after yourself, George. I love George, ladies and gents, boys and girls. Right. There are 1,400 of you watching live right now, uh, which I'm immensely grateful for. So if you're watching on YouTube, please do like the video. It's a massive help to the channel. It helps raise the profile of the channel. Thank you also for the super chat. It's a massively appreciated contribution to the channel and the running costs. And of course, if you're on X, get involved with Latte Firm on the socials. Let's bring in our next guest and it's Dobbo. Thanks for waiting so patiently, my friend. How are you? Oh, mate, I'm good. Honestly, I'm tired. I am um, honestly, but I'm in the best mood that I've ever been in for a, for a, for a, for a long while. To be fair, it's kind of one of the things you know about. Um, you can probably guess what it is. Yeah, I'll talk to you about it after, and then uh, I'm just so excited. So Ooh. excited for this game as well. It, yeah, it's that. It's that what you think it is? Fantastic! Yeah. Congratulations, so, um, my friend. But yeah, Sorry, this, this, but, it, no, everyone, no one's got a clue what we're talking about. But but yeah, we will catch up after. Definitely. Mate, I know but, that's obviously put you in a great mood. Um, yeah. What are your thoughts going into tomorrow? So we had Wayne at the start who talked about nerves, um, trepidation, fear, but a little bit of excitement. George is really intrigued. He wants to see these clashes, you know, the two big guns going head to head. I feel like it's revenge. You know, the five ones, I can't get them out of my head. It was against my favorite manager. And now my favorite manager's son leads us into war tomorrow. Uh, I want revenge. I want I want to basically close that wound and send Bayern packing. What are your thoughts on this on, on the eve before this big game? I'm confident. Um, I'm confident because there's there's a lot of different reasons. Obviously, Bayern are Bayern, and at the end of the day, they've still got top, top class players. They've got world class players in the team that can hurt you. But I think this team deserves our confidence, it deserves our belief. And this season, especially the big games when it's when it's been on the line um, that they've stepped up. Um, we beat City, we drew away to City, we drew away at Anfield, we beat Liverpool, we got through against Porto when it was kind of one of those games where Porto set up really, really well. But we got through it, we got through on penalties, um, and and every time the questions have been asked this season so far, I think Arsenal have responded really well, and I think tomorrow is another big question. Um, and I also, like you say, the revenge factor. Arteta, he takes things personally, and he was there for some of some of those batterings by Bayern. So I know, just having played in that fixture, I know Arteta is out for blood. Um, but I think that the, the team deserves our, our confidence. Not, I'm not going to say I'm overconfident, um, but I'm confident that we we will win. I love the confidence, Dubbo. And, you know, your point about Arteta taking things personally. Have you seen all the clips of uh, Pep Guardiola celebrating against Arsenal and Arteta just sort of sits there? Yeah. There's a clip also of Pep and Arsene Wenger going at it where Pep's like, shut up, shut up. And then Arteta just doesn't flinch. And you're right. These things stick with that guy and I cannot wait to see it. Um, yeah. You're seeing on your screen, well, I've been talking to George, of course, who joined us, the tactical guru that he is. We talked about starting lineups and he said that, you know, he'd prefer Tommy Asu at left back. You know, party brings a quality that, that so few players have in this team, but also in world football, really, at the moment. Um, just quickly, before we look at forwards and get your thoughts on the game, who would you start at left back? Because I'm afraid, not afraid, that's really strong. I, I'm I'm a little bit fearful of Arteta, you know, bringing Zinni into the mix like he's fully fit now. I'm not sure that's the right thing to do because Bayern have got aggressive wide men. Uh, Tommy Asu is fit. Kivior's back in the mix. What would you do? It's tough, but I think... In this sort of game, with the, especially when they've got Komen and Sane, who have been back in training and as as wide outlets, they're such threats. I think in with those players, Bayern are definitely going to try and get us on the transition and use their wide players 
Um, and like George said, Musiala as well. With Musiala trying to feed those wide players, Sane and Komen especially, I think you need your best one-on-one defenders uh, to kind of prevent that because I think that's their best chance of potentially hurting us. And if they see Zinchenko in the starting lineup, just like Brighton did, they will try and kind of target that area. Um, and obviously they've got a bit more quality in the wide areas than Brighton. So you've got real world-class players that that can really hurt Zinchenko. But I can I can see why you play Zinchenko as well, especially in the home leg. I'd rather him play in the home leg where we're going to have more control, more likely than the away leg. Um, but for me, it's it's Tommy Asu just because I think he offers you everything. He's the complete package and it's just that one-on-one ability. I think he's the best one-on-one defender um, or at least wide defender at the club. So I think he has to play. And all this with Algeria and Timber. And in midfield, just very quickly before we look at forwards, are you sticking with Jorginho or are you going for the big man? I think Partey. Um, I think Jorginho (laughs) will be... uh, I think Jorginho's one of those weapons to to bring off the bench that if we say 2-0 up and we want to control the game, um, I think he's he's a really good player to bring on and kind of just kill the game, control the tempo, um, kind of kill Bayern out of it. Like Man City do, just just pass you to a just pass a thousand times and and kill kill the opposition. But I think physically, I think we have to we have to match them in the midfield, and I think physically they can uh, really compete with our midfield. So I think we have to play Partey, and I think the reason we didn't see Partey against Brighton, I think, was the pure fact that he's being saved for um, at least 60, 70 minutes in this buying game because I think he will be needed. Wow! 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 Uh, random one. Alien Alan Alien says, joined late, very unrelated, but FK, I tried Nando's for Iftar the other day, and you were so right. The lemon and herb is truly elite. My man, I know my food, trust me. Lemon and herb is the absolute elite flavor at Nando's. It's not about their hot, it's not about their extra hot, because it's just tangy nonsense, and it's not even spicy. But lemon and herb, the flavor... Oh, and the barbecue tamer as well is just another elite uh, selection. Uh, I can see uh, Rohan is in the background. I'll bring him in shortly. But just before you sort of leave us, I do want to get your thoughts on the wide forwards and your predictions ahead of tomorrow. So, again, bringing up uh, our forward options. So we've agreed that, look, Tommy Asu will play left back, and that's the rest of the back five. Uh, we think party might start in central midfield. But up front is also a bit of a, an unusual uh, headache for Mikel. Saka, Havertz, Martinelli is the picture on screen. That's what I think he's going to do. Hopefully Martinelli's fit. But is there a shout for Trossard and or Jesus to start? Yeah, I, th- I think there is, to be honest. Um, and it's it's so tough. And it's it's the headaches that I'd rather Mikel Arteta deal with than, than us, to be honest. Because it's it's just so difficult, isn't it? Because Trossard, I, I'm, I'm not really a fan of him on the wing, personally. Um I don't mind him coming on and and playing out wide when he can kind of get at defenders a little bit more when when the, the legs are potentially a bit more tired. Um, but he's that player that if you get that one chance, he's a killer. He's an absolute killer. He's ice cold. He did it against Porto, one chance and he scored. Um, and we went on to, to obviously progress in the tie. But I think in terms of the overall threat that he can offer from the outset, um, I don't think you can displace Kai from centre forward. And that's the only place that I think I'd start Trossard at the moment. But I think he's the perfect player to bring off, uh, especially if we're, say, 1-0 up and you want to try and grab another goal or you're 2-0 up and you want someone that can that can go at players with the, the fresh legs and if he gets one chance, he'll convert it. Um, and then I think the big one for me is is Jesus first Martinelli, Martinelli for me on that left wing um, because Havertz has to be there for me. He has to be there. I don't think you can justify bringing him out. Saka has to be there. Um, I don't it's amazing how we talk about Havertz, isn't it, Dobbo? You know, like both of us, lots of people, yeah. ask, Havertz has to be there. But, you know, first choice out of the front three, like he's been brilliant. Yeah, he's 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 been superb. And he's he's really making that kind of centre forward role his, his own. Um, and like he said uh, on the show yesterday, I think it was uh, that he's had the most goal contribution since the start of February or something in the Premier League, yep. which yep. is just just incredible. Um, but it's it's not just his goal contributions. He does so much work off the ball as well, which is going to be so important tomorrow. He's really important to our press. The spaces he opens for other players, the intelligence of his runs. It's its its like every week they're just levelling up. Um, obviously, for the goal that he scored against Brighton, the way he's, he moved and kind of shifted behind the defender was spot on. And he just creates space for everyone. And those 
those wide players that we have can hurt you so much when there's space. Um, but yeah, for me, it's the, the big question of the front three is Martinelli versus Jesus for me. Um, Trossard, I'd start on the bench personally, bring on. Um, I think he has to come on at some point because I think he can definitely offer something to this team. Um, but I don't know. It's so tough. Um, Jesus, he's got the, the Champions League record. He's got a bit of the experience under the lights at this stage. But then Martinelli's that sort of, that, he's got that dog in him, hasn't he? That he will just absolutely, he, he, he won't stop running. He'll be a constant threat in behind. And I think sometimes we have lacked that threat in behind, especially on the break. His pace um, is just something that we don't really have in terms of in terms of that profile in the team, apart from him. Um, but I think it's one of those where I will be happy whatever Arteta chooses in terms of Jesus or Martinelli. I don't think I'm going to complain because we've still got the option of bringing whoever misses out off the bench. Um, and we've still got other options such as Trossard that you can bring on as well. So we're in a position now that whoever misses out, we've actually got top quality on the bench that we can bring off and we've got game changers and impact players. Um, but yeah, I think for me, Martinelli versus Jesus is the question mark. Yeah, I agree with you. I think uh, Trossard for me is a finisher and a great impact player off the bench. He's come up clutch so many times this season. For me, it's fairly straightforward. Even if Jesus is fit, I think Havertz, his form and contribution to this team warrants him starting up front. I think Saka, unbelievable, obviously. And Martinelli, if he's fit and raring to go, bring him on. A few people have said, look, play Jesus out wide on the left and let Nelly finish the game. That's also an option, but we are blessed with options. Uh, Dobbo, before you leave us, prediction for tomorrow night. I'm going to go bold. Um, I'm going 3-0. I, <laughs> I, think, I think that it's one of those games that nine times out of 10, we win 3-0. And one time out of 10, we lose 2-1, 3-1. Um, and I, I trust this team to, to make it the, the, the biggest statistic of the nine out of 10 times. So I'm, I'm going to go bold. I'm going to go 3-0. We're getting some revenge against Bayern. Um, and I think we're going to take a nice lead into the second leg. I love to see it. Uh, by the way, Lou Weed in the chat saying, if Dobbo's smile was any bigger, the top of his head would fall off with a heart <laughs> emoji. Uh, Dobbo, I look forward to catching up with you on WhatsApp, maybe straight after tonight's show. But thank you so much for joining us. If anybody wants to follow Dobbo, he's available on X at Dobbo0107. Enjoy thank the you. game, my friend. Are you there tomorrow night? I am there tomorrow, yeah. Uh, I'm going to got a nice early one tomorrow. Uh, I'm going to go home, have a nap, um, because I'm up again at three o'clock the next morning. Uh, for work so yeah it's it's the sacrifices we make for this football club but i'll be having a nice nap before the game but i will be there i wouldn't i wouldn't miss anything i wouldn't miss it for the world we will be there uh listen Dumbo, look after yourself enjoy the game tomorrow my friend thank you so much for Cheers. joining thanks oh well, there you have it ladies and gents boys and girls we've heard from wayne who was nervous a little bit anxious fearful kind of excited we've heard from george and his tactical genius talking about his intrigue for this fixture and we've just heard from Dobbo, who is bold, uh, and he is predicting good things for Arsenal. Maybe a 3-0 win tomorrow uh, if everything goes well. Let's bring in, I'll tell you what, people talked about a four-person panel. Let's bring in our fourth guest tonight, and he's one of my favourites. It's Rohan. <laughs> How you doing, man? Oh, I'm doing good. Doing good. Can't wait for tomorrow, honestly. <laughs> Let's just go wait. straight into it, man. Can't First of wait. all, thanks for joining. Uh, this yeah, has been a very unusual show. It's a very impromptu sort of late night latte. Revolving door, uh, as someone, I think Flip Doc uh, guessed it uh, earlier on. Just, you know, guests coming in, coming and going. Let's, let's keep it like that. So you are buzzing for tomorrow. First of all, are you going tomorrow? Yes, I'm going. I'm going. Yeah, that's why I've, I've, I've been doing more work today, just so that I don't need to do as much tomorrow. <laughs> Mate, I've not been yeah. productive today. Like, I've been busy. I've been doing yeah. stuff. But I just keep – I've been listening to – I've got my little uh, sound link uh, on the side. I've been listening to the Champions League theme <laughs> tune so loud, like, pretty much most of the afternoon. I, mate, I am ready for tomorrow. I want yeah. revenge for tomorrow, uh, for, for all the painful defeats we've had in the past. I know it's got nothing to do with Mikel. I know he was in the squad at the time. But, oh, mate, I'm buzzing. So, tell me, why are you excited? I, I For me – I, I wasn't blessed to have watched the Invincible era in terms of watching it live. You know, I caught up with so much of the tape during lockdown. I remember at the time I literally was just rinsing all those games. And I was like, oh, I wish I, wish I was there to watch that live uh, in the flesh like right now. So the way the team is playing now, I've never seen us hit the levels that we've reached so far. And that's why I've, I, I've tweeted it out many times that we shouldn't take this for granted, what, what we're doing right now under Mikel. You know, the level that he has coached this team, every detail, is, is choreographed in a way that just 
is, is, is causing so many issues for the opposition. I mean, Rob Edwards came out recently and said that Arsenal just have so many different ways of playing where it makes it so difficult for a coach to set up. And that's why I think I, I, I think we've we've got we've got this. We've got this tomorrow. Um, and it, it's it's just the momentum of obviously winning on the weekend, but also Liverpool dropping points as well against Man United. I think everyone's going to be buzzing for it. And I think that energy, I think it's so under, underestimated in terms of what fans can do in terms of transmitting that energy and how it ripples off to the players and that adrenaline. And I think we're going to, I think tomorrow is going to be like, do you remember when we beat United 3-0 um, in the 15-16 season where it was like, um, in the first 20 minutes where it was like Urza or Walcott and Sanchez. I think he's oh, going to yes. like that. I oh, think yes. Gonna, yeah. It was wow. that that game was phenomenal, and I remember it vividly. I'm just going to stop sharing the screen for a second, Rohan, and just bring up the Bundesliga table because I want to get your thoughts on what's been happening in Germany. Yeah. Obviously, Xabi Alonso, Granit Xhaka, your favourite, my favourite, have been doing yes. absolute bits with them. This is the league table. Uh, we we covered this about half an hour ago. For anybody who's just joined new, I can see an, a real surge in in viewers, uh, just shy of two thousand people now watching Thank across you. both platforms, which is insane. Bayer Leverkusen are top, unbeaten in all competitions, which is important yeah. to add. They are one win away from winning the Bundesliga, and I'd be so happy. I cannot wait, Rohan. And we, will wait we will be there. We will be there to go and see Granit Xhaka. Do you know what? I might even go out to Germany and <laughs> watch a game of theirs because I just want to get it all in. Absolutely. Um, but, but, but Bayern Munich, why have they been so miserable this season? I mean, you know, Harry Kane, incredible goal scorer, unbelievable stats this season. He's gone there. Thomas Tuchel, he's been there. He's done it. He's won it. What's happened? Or, or, or is Xabi Alonso just that special? I'll be honest with you, Father. I've not, I've not managed to catch loads of the Bundesliga this season. So it's, it's difficult for me to really say. But from the games that I have watched of Bayern Munich, it's, I found it really incredible how teams are able to play through them with such ease, given the players that they have at their disposal across the spine of their team. Whereas I look at Xabi Alonso and what he's doing at Bayern Leverkusen. And again, they're very similar to Arsenal in terms of They've had multiple ways to attack the opposition and different ways to combat different problems that they've encountered. And that's why they've been so consistent. And actually, you know, it's kind of joked about a lot, you know, between us and others about how, you know, Granite Jacker has gone there and and all of a sudden that they've, they've become this good. But Granite Jacker has arguably been the best midfielder in the Bundesliga. You know, what he is doing there, he's been doing at Arsenal for so many years as well since Pickel came in. And this is what really frustrates me because everyone looks at Granite Jacker's final season at Arsenal saying how you know that was the only good season that Granit Xhaka had no Granit Xhaka was one of our most consistent performers under Arteta a manager who was able to get the best out of him and tailor a system that that mitigated his deficiencies and allowed him to flourish and that's exactly what Jabi Alonso is doing I think I don't know if you saw Xhaka was talking about it in an interview where he, he, he compared Arteta and Jabi Alonso and how both those managers they just place so much emphasis on getting the best out of the individual and if you get the best out of the individual then you'll reap the rewards from it. And I think, you know, Granite has been massive for Bayer Leverkusen. And I think Bayern Munich, what I have seen from them is that they've been very easy to play through, but I don't think we should underestimate the firepower that they have. And it's very much Champions League nights. When you get to the knockout stages, it's defined by fine margins and it's defined by that clinical edge. And they do have players who can hurt us. And I think the past few weeks, they have kind of down tools a little bit. I don't think that they've been placing as much importance in the Bundesliga because of how well Bayern Leverkusen have been playing. And I think tomorrow they'll be ready for it. But I look at the way Arsenal play. I look at the way that Mikel Arteta sets the team up. Tactically, we're as good as anyone. I, I think if we, if both teams play at their, their maximum capability, Arsenal win. And that's, that's, what, that's how I see it. That's what I love to hear. Uh, I just want to get some comments up on screen because the chat has been going wild. Uh, Nicholas. Studer says FK really <laughs> assembled the Arsenal podcast Avengers for this preview show. Yeah, li listen, it was just a, a lo very last minute thing, right, Ro? I texted you what? Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> quarter to eight or whatever it was. Like, yeah, you're yeah. coming on. Um, and it's been great. 4 free free says Rohan. Geez, this is an all stars lineup tonight, <laughs> FK. I really appreciate all the love. T Fisher, this panel is insane. It's like the all stars, he says. And Flip Doc, Harlem Globetrotters of Arsenal ball knowledge content. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, here's one for you paul stone i'm watching 12 minutes behind i'm just hoping fk is bringing kim kardashian well behind the scenes is waiting no, I'm, I'm kidding i'm kidding i'm kidding that would have been unbelievable she needs to stay away from the emirates tomorrow i've, I've seen yes. some of the pictures she needs to stay away from the emirates. very much so on, she should be on ticket exchange just like all the other people who are suffering right now she can't be there oh. very much so um right before you joined us Ro, we were talking with wayne and um george and 
uh, Dobbo about lineups, right? So without going through those slides, what would you do with the lineup? I mean, I guess goalkeeper picks himself, Ben White, Gabriel Saliba. So I guess the left back is, is one conundrum. Central midfield could be party, could be Jorginho. You'd expect Rice and Erdegaard to start. Yeah. And up top, I imagine Havertz and Saka, which leaves the left wide forward position. What are you doing? Yeah, so all those those positions that you've mentioned, those would be my choices. But I think I mentioned with the Champions League, the knockout stages, tactically you can be very astute and you can you can set the team up accordingly really well. But fine margins dictate what happened in the knockout stages. You know, I know Carlo Ancelotti gets a lot of credit for that Champions League um, win that they got with Real Madrid recently, but tactically they weren't the, the, the strongest out of out of all the teams in there and there were many games where they played against man city they played against chelsea in which they they were outplayed but what decided it for them were those game breakers and those 1v1 moments that they were able to take their way and that's why they won the champions league and i think for me arsenal need to field the team that gives them the best opportunity to mitigate fine margins so what i mean by that is i want my best 1v1 players across the entire pitch so i look at left back and Kivio and Zinchenko, for me, they're both similar in the sense of when, when they're isolated 1v1 out wide and the distances between other players is really large, both of them struggle defensively in those scenarios. Because from Kivio's point of view, he gets really square on. He doesn't get low enough. And, 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 and because he's really square on, he can't shift his weight across to either side, which means that he can't force his marker to go towards one side. So both opportunities come for the winger when they fix Kivior, they can go inside, they can go outside. I don't know if you can remember it, but Bernardo Silva in the first 10 minutes of the Etihad before Jesus increased his intensity, he had Kivior on, on, on strings. And, and Zinchenko, we know what Zinchenko is like 1v1 defensively as well. So I look at those two players and I think, granted they give us qualities in possession, but I think that that's an area that Bayern Munich can target. So who is our best 1v1 wide defender at fullback it's Tommy Asu and I think Tommy Asu has uh, it's been really good to see him get the minutes that he's had against the likes of Luton and Man City slowly ease into the fold and I think now is ready for, it's ready for him to come into the team granted he can still get rinsed he could get rinsed in, in a few situations but you have to look at who we have available and Tommy Asu is the best player to perform that specific role and also the dueling capacity that he gives you so I would go for Tommy Asu at left back in central midfield, I would go for Thomas Partey because, again, it's about that 1v1 battle. And I think Thomas Partey is one of those players where if he's not fully fit, you see that the level is drastically below what he's capable of. He can be really sloppy on the ball. But I actually think against Luton and also against Man City, as the game went on, he grew into it. And I thought he was really good against Luton as well. And I yeah. think with our team, he is the best vertical midfielder we have in the squad in terms of finding that central space and finding Erdegaard. And that chemistry is already starting to click again between him and Erdegaard. And I think with Thomas Partey, you have to harness it because sometimes he can be too vertical and therefore you can give the ball away and therefore transitions increase. And in this type of game, that could be an issue with a Musiala, with a Harry Kane and a Mateus Tell. I think they'll, they'll, they'll select him as well. But I just look at Thomas Partey and his dueling capacity. And I think he gives us more off the ball than a Jorginho when, when the game becomes stretched. So I would go for Thomas Partey. And I think Jorginho played the entire... 90 minutes against Brighton as well. So I'd imagine Thomas Partey will come into this game. And then left wing, this is an interesting one because if Bayern Munich come to the Emirates and are not pressing high, then I think there's a strong case for Jesus because one, mm -hmm. Jesus, I think his performances have been really good um, in the last two games against, the last two games he's featured in against Man City and um, uh, Brighton. I think out of possession, he's been really strong and intense and with the ball, there's been some really good moments. And his Champions League record is fantastic. And I think he's going to give us more if Bayern Munich are going to sit a little bit deeper. But then if Bayern Munich are pressing high, I look at Gabriel Martinelli and what he can offer in, that, in terms of that threat in behind. The only player in the squad who offers that scintillating pace to, to, to get us in behind. That's, that, that's the conundrum I have. And I'm, I'm not sure on that one, but the rest of the team speaks for itself. Kai Havertz has to start a set-foot. He has to. Yeah, I agree with you. I, I think I want to see Tommy Asu at left-back. I'm just a little bit nervous about Party. Ian's actually just asked a question. Do you not think if Party was playing tomorrow, he got 15 minutes on Saturday? That's what I was thinking, Ian. I was watching the game thinking, come on, bring us Thomas Party, give us 15, 20 minutes. But George thinks that maybe he's been kept completely uh, away from football, going, you know, going big tomorrow. It's a big, 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 bold sort of decision from Mikel because Jorginho has played really well and he played really well on Saturday. And 
I just hope I hope he's fit. I hope he's match ready, and I hope he's I hope he delivers. I mean, party was just insane. I mean, I think well, there's another comment coming in from um, Sender Gaya Henry who says party was kept to be fresh. Yeah, maybe that's my logic. That's my thinking behind it as well. I, I look at Georgina and I think playing 90 minutes against Brighton and then coming on the back of that start against Bayern Munich as well. I'm thinking Thomas Partey would be. And, and Mikel Arteta is not one to not make bold decisions. I remember last season, obviously, it didn't go our way in the end. But when we played Man City at the Emirates and we lost 3-1, Ben White was in ridiculous form. And he took him out of the team and he brought Tommy Asso in. You know, so it's 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 one of those ones where I wouldn't be surprised if he does make bold decisions like that. So what do you think the score is going to be tomorrow, Rohan? Uh, if, you, if you're talking about team selection and you're really excited, what do you reckon? I think 3-0. I've got that Man United game um, on the back of my head. I think it's going to be like the first 20 to 25 minutes. We're going to blitz them. I really do. I think I think that's what's going to happen. Wow. 3 and I, have to say, I, I, I know I'm, I may be a bit deluded sometimes with my predictions, <laughs> but, but I have been getting them pretty decently recently in terms of like the how fast we start. So. Look, we look, we've got every right to be excited. You yeah. know, yeah. Arsenal are playing phenomenal football. The underlying metrics this season irrespective of where the title race might go and how far we might get in this tournament, everything we've seen in terms of the evolution of the process, building on last year, we have been phenomenal. We're really good at football. And, you know, it's, we've, you know, I think today people were tweeting, we've got a fully fit squad. Yeah. I've been praying for a fully fit squad in April for years. And it feels like Arteta and the medical team and the coaching staff have, have almost timed this to perfection. So I'm really hoping that Mikel doesn't overcomplicate. He just goes with what we know and let's play the game, not the occasion. I mean, deep down, I want a bit of revenge for the 5-1, but let's go there and blitz them like you say. Now, if Champions League... We... Like, if on. we don't play the occasion, we win. That, it, it, that's how I see it. You know, if we play the I mean, game, embrace the occasion. Like, you know, the lights the and, the, and, and the fact that it's a quarterfinal and the Champions League music, which gets the hairs on your head standing up. Yeah. Um, but, but like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, um, but you know, it is about just doing what we know best. This is a young team, an inexperienced team. Like, don't get fearful or think too much or overcomplicate it. Just go out and play the football we've been playing. Yeah, hundred percent. I think it's it's also. I think it's. I think it's to our advantage that we play at home first. Now, I think that the, the, the disadvantage is if you're playing the second leg away from home. Porto, for example, if it goes to extra time, it goes to penalties, you have the fans by your side. But I think we'll be able to play more confidently if we start the game at home. And also with no Bayern Munich fans there as well. I mean, there'll probably be a few there who've, who've somehow managed to cop the ticket. But um, I, I think it's, I'm happy that we're playing home for us. And if we get through, it's good that we play the second uh, the semi-final at home as well. Indeed. Uh, I've just gone. Oh, yeah, that's, that's all I was going to say. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, listen, uh, no Bayern Munich fans, of course, tomorrow at the Emirates. It's going to be a sellout crowd, a home crowd, which is going to be phenomenal. Unfortunately, no Tifo display from the club. I think last minute, uh, really trying their best to do it. But listen, if you've got a ticket, if you're coming to the game with me and Ro, bring your schnitzel. <laughs> bring everything yeah. you've got, my friends. Uh, wear red, bring scarves, sing passionately. It's going to be one hell of a night. If things go to plan. I've just brought up on screen the road to Wembley, where Mikel Arteta, incidentally, has never lost as a player or coach. Just, just something to, to bear in mind. Um, the, the draw has been made to cover the semi-final. As you can see on the right-hand side, if we can overcome Bayern Munich over these two legs, we will play the winner of Real Madrid and Manchester City. How do you think that game's going to go? Or tie, rather? That's, it's Logically, you would say Man City will win, but there's something about Real Madrid in this competition. No, granted, last season, Man City did manage to get the better of them, but there's something about this competition in Real Madrid where they just don't die. I don't know if you watched the game against um, Leipzig um, in the, the the game before. Leipzig should have went through. They yeah. absolutely battered them. Battered them. And what let them down, and what we mentioned before, is that clinical, ruthless edge in the final third. And, and Real Madrid always have that. And that's what makes them really dangerous. If you don't kill them, they will kill you. That, that's that's how it is with them. And, and Man City tactically, they have the best manager in the world. They they have they they are the ones to beat. So, I think Man City will 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 go through. But I would want Real Madrid. And I I look at Real Madrid and I think, yes, they have the the, the Champions League heritage. They have those finishes. But from a footballing point of view, I back us to beat Real Madrid over two legs. So I think against Man City, <laughs> it will be. It will be. It will be. I, I think Man City will 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 do us over two legs. Um, whereas I think Real Madrid, we can 
uh, we, we can get over the line and we can get to Wembley. Oh, he's so excited. We've got to just get through to buy-in first. <laughs> yeah. Of course, you yeah. can only you know, yeah. beat what's in front of you. But listen, I've just asked the chat, and unfortunately, oh, the opinions are mixed. Official says Manchester. V Vlad says Manchester City, unfortunately. DFC thinking Madrid are going to go through. Look, Vinicius Jr. against no Kyle Walker. That could be interesting. Uncle Doris yeah. says we're going to have to play Man City twice more. I can feel it. Trevor de Vega, Real Madrid FK. The Joker says Real Madrid. Listen, I think we all agree that playing Manchester City in a two-legged tie in a European competition so late in the season when the title is on the line, seven games away from that, we'll talk about the title race shortly, is the worst possible outcome for Arsenal. You know, like, obviously I want to go through against Bayern, but if it means playing Man City, I'd rather not go through. I know that sounds (laughs) ridiculous, but like, and, and we can beat Man City. You know, we've proven. We've taken four points off from this season. We we beat them in the Community Shield on pens. Actually, you could say that City should be fearful of Arsenal because the underlying metrics and actually that the record this season shows that Arsenal are the better team. But I just don't want any distractions, man. And you know those two games are going to be emotionally so much. Yeah. And like you just worry again. We talk about the second youngest team squad in the Premier League. They were, were they were burnt unfortunately at the back end of last season. I don't. We just don't want that distraction. Yeah. Uh, but that is the draw. And of course, if if we were to overcome Bayern Munich and if we can overcome either Real Madrid or Manchester City, we will face one of Atletico, Dortmund, PSG or Barcelona. Imagine Barcelona in the final. Oh, that'd and be getting so revenge. good. Wouldn't that yeah. be amazing? Wait, that's, the, that's what I want. If you could give me a scenario, it would be Arsenal, Bayern, Barcelona. Real, Barca. <laughs> that's it. Oh, man. <laughs> that would be the one. I'm getting too excited. I'm getting too excited. Right. I think that is enough of Champions League football. We've had four tremendous guests. Uh, Ro, I could not not ask you about our domestic season, the yeah. title race. Uh, this graphic, courtesy of now underscore Arsenal on the left-hand side, shows where we were after 31 games last season and 31 games this season. Now, obviously, we had more points uh, last season, just three more, because we had such a phenomenal start to the, to the Premier League season. And of course, we all remember only too well how painfully we kind of petered out towards the end. This season, and given our results and run of results in 2024, 10 wins and a draw and seven fixtures to go, it feels like we're doing the opposite. Like we we started okay, and now we're really flying. Got the bit between our teeth. What do you think the key difference is? Is yeah, it so, just so. down to personnel or is it down to experience and tactical development and evolution under Mikel? I, I think it's a combination of all those things. And I, I said um, early in the season, I thought the plan this season would be to to peak later, peak later towards the business end of the season, because ultimately that is when it all counts and essentially give yourself the best platform to go hard at the end. And and the biggest difference is that I see relative to last season is if you look at Arsenal's press, and I've mentioned it many times where last season, Arsenal's press we were the, the joint best in the league, you know, up until game week 32, I think it was, in terms of the intensity, the aggression. And we were very one-dimensional in our approach, but it was working for us. It was man-to-man across the entire pitch, and we were aggressive, and it gave us so much success. But as we sustained injuries to Tommy Asso and Saliba, you started to see that drop off because playing that way, playing that style of press requires 1v1 specialists. And without a Saliba, and then without a Tommy Asso coming in, You then have the Rob Holdings who come in and et cetera, et cetera. And then it's it's not sustainable. And we saw it with as we went through towards the business end of the season last year, playing against Man City. We tried to go man-to-man. I don't know if you saw Bernardo Silva's interview where last season Arsenal went man-to-man everywhere. And when you go man-to-man, it's a 50-50. It's a a 50-50 across all areas of the pitch. And sometimes when you're playing against Erling Haaland and De Bruyne, they will kill you in transition. This season, what Arsenal have done is that they've conserved more energy in their press. So they've started a little bit more patient. They've increased the intensity when certain triggers have, have been applied. So that's when you force them wide or when a fullback jumps, that's when we go man to man. But we start a little bit more calmer before we increase the intensity. And statistically, Arsenal's press this season has been just as effective as last season, but we're conserving more energy. So what's more efficient? This one. You know, we're doing the same thing last season, but better, but we're able to peak harder and we're going to be able to sustain it over the course of 38 games. And I also think. The, the key that Mikel Art, key thing that Mikel Arteta has done is that, granted, we had quite a few teething issues, I would say, up until 2024. And actually, Arsenal's 11, up until I think Forest this year, away from home, we made at least one change to the lineup in every single game. There was not a single time in which, in two games in a row, we fielded the same team. And I think that 
has helped us in terms of keeping certain players warm, but also allowing us to be more unpredictable and having more variety to our game. And I also think David Raya, Kai Havertz, um, Declan Rice. Declan Rice was a certified bank. We all knew that. Um, and the other two, Raya and Havertz, there were question marks. But each of those players have given Arsenal an element of unpredictability, an element of playing a different way to last season. With Kai Havertz, when he plays centre forward, when teams press us really high, we can go over the top. He can compete for a first ball. We can we can latch onto a second ball, and we don't need to play out from the back in those scenarios. We can we we we're, we're upfield by going a lot more direct. And David Rice's long range distribution is fantastic, and Declan Rice obviously he's been transformational. Arsenal, are the best team out of possession in the world, every single metric suggests this. Because of Declan Rice and his impact and the ground he covers, the physicality he offers, the duels, the 1v1s, everything, that is what he gives you. And I think when you take all these elements together and 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 how our squad is a lot stronger in terms of the back line, you've seen this season where Zinchenko was out, Tommy Asu was out, Kivio stepped in and will be one of our unsung heroes of the season because he came in a period where you know we were struggling in that role, in that position in terms of personnel. Mikel Arteta adapted to his needs and we had our best form of the season when he was in the team. You know, so we've had a lot more layers to our game, a lot more unpredictability. And I think the press, how we're more, more conservative, but we're achieving the same effectiveness. There's so many different things. But I think the key and the emphasis has been effectively to peak later on in the season. And here we are, seven to go. And it's it's exciting. It, it is exciting. 4 free free says Rohan. What a monologue. You sold me the dream. Uh, Matthew also following up by saying elite overview, Rohan. Listen, oh, thank you. things change fast. You can see on the right hand side, match week 30 to match week 32, courtesy of the Premier League. Liverpool were top and two points clear. All of a sudden we find ourselves top now um, and clear on goal difference, even though Jamie Garriger thinks we're joint top. But anyway, enough of that. There are going to be moments where you know you just need to buckle in and just take the pressure <laughs> you know there are going to yeah. be moments like like yesterday where we all sat at home watching United take on Liverpool Liverpool went one nil up and all of a sudden I'm you know down in the dumps thinking oh god this fixture Klopp's gonna do it and then Bruno Fernandes out of nowhere just out of nowhere. <laughs> I mean and then Mainu. I mean wow when he scored as soon as he'd hit that ball I think he said it in the post in his post match interview. He was like, you know, I, I hit the connection like I just knew. And the commentator Peter Drury made a point of like he didn't even look up when he shot. He yeah. just he just knew as soon as he hit that ball, I was up off my sofa and I was screaming. Same and, <laughs> yeah, and and like when he scored and he you know sort of jogged over to the corner flag, I was like, yes, baby, come on, United, <laughs> like properly. And it's such a shame they couldn't hold on, but it is two points dropped and. Yeah. That's the state of the league at the moment. So Arsenal are top, Liverpool obviously second on goal difference, Manchester City third. I'm going to bring up the fixtures that remain. And my question to you is this. Yes. Well, first of all, <laughs> where's the title going? But maybe you can end <laughs> on that. Do you, th I mean, lots of people have been saying, look, you know, Arsenal just got to win every game now. It's in our hands. This is obviously courtesy of Sky Sports. I don't see us winning all seven of those games. I'm really sorry to break that to everybody. That's just my opinion. There might be a lot of people that think we're going to cruise seven games. We're going to beat United. We're going to beat uh, Spurs. We might. Absolutely, we might. And, and if we do, Ro, that's going to be a run of 17 wins and a draw in the last 18 games of the Premier League season, which is unbelievable and probably never happened before. So I think we're going to lose. Question to you is, do you think all three teams will drop points? And then lead yeah. us to your conversation. You know, and, and where do you think that might happen? Then lead us to your conversation about who might actually win the league. Yeah, so, so do you remember when we, uh, it was me, you and Wayne, we were on um, uh, for a late night latte. And I think it was before, might have been before Liverpool. No, no, it wasn't before Liverpool, but it was it was a little bit after that. And and we actually spoke about this and how, you know, um, yeah. there, there was there was a conversation about how, I think I think Wayne was alluding to how he thinks Liverpool are just going to win all their games from now to the end of the season if they no that was it it was before the Liverpool game against Man City so we were debating who who we wanted to win and I said at the time every single team would drop points every single team you know Liverpool have the Europa League and then they've got to play Thursday Sunday Thursday Sunday and Liverpool were probably playing a lot of their games last um, I think I might be wrong but um, and I think that that plays a that that gives us an advantage but ultimately I look at it. And I think the fixture congestion, what you alluded to in terms of the mentally, how mentally draining the Champions League can be, we will drop points. We will, you know, but I don't think we'll lose. I don't think we'll lose another game in the Premier League, but I think we'll drop points. And I think Man City will drop points. And I think Liverpool will drop points. I look at Liverpool and no one's really focused on it, but Everton away from home, that's going to be so hard for them. I, mm -hmm. I honestly, I think, I think we're underestimating how 
how how up for it Everton are in these types of games. You know, they've had success against Klopp over the years. Sean Dyche will be raring for it. I see that as a banana skin. I see Spurs at home potentially a banana skin as well in terms of dropping mm-hmm. points. And and Fulham away, Fulham away, don't write them off. You know, Fulham away could be the game where the, the, the fixture where we look back on and think, oh, that's where we lost the title. Um, and Man City, oh, Man City, I think it's just that Tottenham game away from home where I'm looking mm-hmm. at them and thinking that they'll that they'll drop something. But I think. Man City are on the slow cooker where they're just they're 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 kind of just they're they're just there. But but we're not really but we're not really focusing too much on them. There's been a lot of focus on Liverpool, but there's been less focus on, on Man City. But we don't rule them out because they have the experience to go go on a run. But I do think that if we if Mikel Arteta manages the squad accordingly, which he has done so far, I think if you look at Man City to Luton, he made five changes. If you look at Luton to Brighton, he made four changes. He's rotating the squad accordingly, and we're still achieving the performances. It's a good start. If he can keep doing that, then I think that we can get over the line. I think goal difference is huge. I don't think either of the two teams will top us on goal difference. I think the margin's too big, you know, unless City like beat Luton 10 0 this weekend, which they're capable of doing. Um, but yeah, goal, goal difference. I, I, I've got this feeling it's going to go down to goal difference, Faisal. And I think that's oh, where we win it. I, 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 I can't see... You think we're going to win it on goal difference? Yeah, yeah I, I think it's going to be one on goal difference. This season's going to do me in, man. Could you imagine the last you game me, of the mate. season? We're, we're, at, we're at the Emirates. We're watching, you know, Arsenal play Everton. Uh, City are at home to West Ham and, you know, the score comes through. They've just scored their fourth goal. We've got to get one more. And, like, the panic. Oh, the thing is, is if, God, Everton, no. if Everton are safe by then, if Everton are safe by then, it's just us and Liverpool. Everton will throw that game for us. They'll do it. They'll throw it. Look, just on the points that you've made. So, first up, my thoughts on this are, I think all three teams are going to drop points. Yeah. I can't see us winning seven out of seven. Dare I say, we might even lose one of those seven. It could be Old Trafford. It could be Spurs. It could be just an unexpected game. It's just the way of the Barclays. Liverpool, for me, I think yesterday, I wasn't expecting them to drop points yesterday because in in the game at Anfield, they had 29 or 30 shots on goal. A shot every three minutes, basically. And they drew that game, but they were really unlucky. And I thought Liverpool would go to United and, and they'd win. For me, Liverpool dropped points in that three game, uh, three away games. So you've got Fulham away, Everton away, West Ham away. And they are three games in six days after a trip out to Atalanta in the Europa League second leg. Now, of course, they play their first leg this week. They might be out of sight, in which case Jurgen Klopp can rotate. But it's the Everton game. You mentioned it, Ro. <clears throat> Excuse me. They've been docked two points today. It is the last Merseyside derby that Klopp will play. So the Everton fans, players, staff will all be up for that. A chance for them to derail the the, the Jurgen Klopp fairy tale, just like it was for Manchester United yesterday. And potentially the last ever Merseyside derby at Goodison Park. They will be flying that night. Now, either they play the occasion and they completely fuck it up, or (laughs) they rise to the occasion and do something... Phenomenal. I mean, someone tweeted me the other day saying um, Liverpool in the last seven times they've been an Everton away. They've only won four times. So there are stats that will back up saying that Everton is a tough place to go. And Moisey's boys, they're so unpredictable. Like West Ham, one week they're phenomenal, one week they're absolutely atrocious. But you know, it looks like they're just on the rise and there's potentially European football for them. So I, I think I agree with you. I'm not sure about Tottenham at home. I think I think Liverpool will walk that and they've got revenge for that, you know, for, for losing the game at, at Spurs earlier this That's season. That's true. That's a good point, yeah. Man City, I know you've got to go, mate. So I'll, no, I'll, right, I'll I'm leave good, you I'm with good, this. I'm good, I'm sure. good. Yeah, yeah, good. Man City, they have the easiest fixtures on paper and, you know, you said Luton might win uh, they might beat Luton ten nil. Not with Rob Edwards in charge. Not Rob friend. Edwards. Go on, Rob. They'll be, they'll be rinsing that tweet post match <laughs> interview after. That. Uh, absolutely, yeah. Here's the boss, and everyone just like ogles. Different um, lighting every time. <laughs> Brighton away is tricky. Yeah, Brighton. And I say that obviously with with the we've just we've just beaten Brighton very comfortably, but they're really unpredictable. And yeah. by that point. Actually, you know, it's a couple of weeks. You never know. I don't know if Matoma or Ferguson or, or you know, uh, Solly, March, Solly, Solly March. Yeah, exactly. They, they, they could be back or they might just play them at a time when Brighton are up for it. And, they're you know, they are so hot and cold. I expect them to beat Wolves. Nottingham Forest away, fighting for their lives. You never know, mate. You never Relegation. Know. You know, I did, didn't see you draw at Forest last year. Yes, um, it was uh, it was um, Chris Wood. Do you remember? It was yeah. Like, 
Yeah, it's so, 1-1. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, there are fixtures there and Spurs away. If that's going to be rescheduled and if that's late in the season and Spurs have already secured Champions League by then, maybe they'll throw it. I don't know. But hopefully, and you know, that's who we are, mate. Takes it seriously. <laughs> it's what The Premier League is a humbler. You do, so that it doesn't matter how good you are, a fixture could come your way and it could humble you. It could humble any of us, you know, and, and that's what's dangerous. And I think, you know, every point that we make about Everton away, we could apply that to Tottenham away for us, you know every single point there you know yeah. that that's that that for me is the two games that i'm a little bit edgy on are wolves away and tottenham away i think, wolves? I think yeah really wolves, yeah the reason why i say wolves is, is if the Bayern munich game it becomes a lot more tight than i envisage it's on the wednesday it's away from home then we play wolves saturday night yeah 7 30 kickoff yeah, yeah it's a, i think that and wolves Wolves this season, I don't know if you see it, Wolves, if there's one team that has been undone by refereeing decisions this season, it's Wolves. They have been, the amount of points that they've lost from poor refereeing decisions is ridiculous. And he actually lost yeah. his head um, post-match, Gary, in the other, finally um, against West Ham. So I think that's a tricky one. But I think Aston Villa at home next week, I think that's one of our easier fixtures. I know on paper it doesn't seem it, but in terms of the way the teams play, and I don't know, the, the game when we played them at Villa Park, we should have battered them. The amount of chances we created in that game. No, so I, I think that'll be a, uh, I think that'll be a comfortable one. But I'm looking at Wolves and Tottenham away, and I'm thinking there's, yeah, something about Wolves away that I'm a bit worried about. Interesting. Okay, so let me put you on the spot before we end the show. And by the way, there are 2,700 of you watching live right now. Immensely grateful. If we can get to 500 likes on YouTube, I would be so it deserves grateful. It. This channel deserves <laughs> it. It deserves it. Thank you, it. Ro. I appreciate that. But it's great for the profile of the channel. Thanks also for the very generous super chats at the start of the show. Uh, all of that is gratefully received. Obviously, helps with the running costs of the channel. Um, and get involved in socials if you like any of the any of the, the the panelists that we've had as well. Engage with them on social media. Where do you think the title's going to go, Ro? You know me. I'm a believer. I'm always a believer. <laughs> I think I think I'll start winning it. And I'm going to be in the ground. I'm going to cry. If we win the league, I will cry. I, I get emotional about these things. I, I can see it. I can see, you know that, oh, you know, just that full-time whistle on the final day of the season. And like the players just drop on their knees and they've done it. And I'm dropping on mine. Everyone probably celebrating. I'll drop on my knees and oh, we've actually done it. And honestly, Arsenal will win a league under Arteta. It is, I can guarantee you that. But how special would it be against Pep and Klopp? Two managers who I think, if everyone can agree, are at least top five in the Premier League era. At least. At least top five. For a man to be the youngest ever manager to win the league against these two juggernauts going toe-to-toe -to -toe in his first managerial job, from where Arsenal were to where we are now, the master the nurse is the apprentice, the apprentice topples the master. No, Mate, no. There's so many. It, honestly, it's like, oh. And I'll tell you what, if Arsenal win the league, Opposition fans, they will not be ready because it will be the content, the tweets, YouTube, everything. Oh, my God. That summer is going to be. Oh. It's going to be fire. I mean, that's one of my biggest regrets in life. You know, I, I think I joined Twitter on like 2012, something like that, and where we were just really bad. And imagine if Twitter had been around when we went unbeaten. I mean, you're probably not old enough to remember it as an adult. But like for <laughs> me, wow. Wow. If we were to win the league. It's and happening. I've just, I've just asked the question, who would win in the league? And, and look at this. Every, first of all, Afsar says, Rohan talks a lot of sense. You got a lot of love in the chat, bro. Thank oh. you so much for, jo for, for, for joining us tonight. Flip Doc says, yes, Rohan, believe red and white. Maybe, maybe delusion, though. Maybe a bit of delusion <laughs> as well, but I don't care. I believe in my team. I believe in my team. I believe in my players. You got to. That's what you've got to be a romantic. Job. You've, yeah, yeah, exactly. You've got to be an optimist. Uh, Trevor, with some kind words. Uh, right, the Joker says Arsenal. Matthew Simpson says Arsenal. Trevor De Vega, Arsenal. V Vlad says Heart says Arsenal. Head says City. Sorry, guys. Uh, yeah, listen, I can understand that. Uh, Rancid Pumpkin says, I don't want to jinx it. Just sit on the fence, Rancid. Just, just do that. Flip Doc says, twenty years after the Invincibles, we're gonna do it. The youngest manager to do it. I believe Kyle says the Arsenal. The Arsenal. Um, Asketh, uh, Ashketh, sorry, says ESR will score the goal that will win us the league. Oh Wouldn't my that god! Be wonderful? <laughs> Wouldn't that be wonderful? Um, don't do it to yourself, Ro. <laughs> Four three three <laughs> no, says. No. <laughs> um, honestly, mate, I'm going to be an emotional wreck. It's going to be really, really difficult to kind of get through the next six, seven weeks and be productive in life and pay attention at work. But 
it's all that's on my mind, bro. Like I, yeah, I wake it's... up and I think of Arsenal. I log on to Twitter and I'm just I'm I'm in all the content. I, I'm 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 drinking it all in. Like I'm watching it. everything. Yeah. You can't. You just you can't. and and I've got, actually just on that point. Mm-hmm. There are some fans who 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 sort of attacked, or not attacked, who, who sort of criticised me for 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 supporting United and celebrating yesterday. Oh, yeah. You've got to, you've got to, got to embrace it. Like at the end of the day, yeah. two of these three fantastic clubs, managers, players are not going to win the league, and they are going to be heartbroken. Of course, I'm really fearful of that. Like I'm kind of almost expecting it as well deep down if i'm brutally honest that you know we're just gonna run out of legs for whatever reason it's just the way my mind works my heart's obviously getting carried away but if you can't enjoy the ride of going from second to first and then you know feeling absolutely miserable when we drop from first to second or third and then climb back up to the top of the league and watch other you know we we hate watching other teams and they're dropping points here and there if you can't enjoy it if you can't be part of that ride, if you can't let your emotions go and just get carried away with yeah. romance and optimism, but also then get hit with the heart heartbreaking sort of pessimism sometimes, like that's the beauty of the game. That is exactly what it is. Honestly, what's the point? I hate. I, I literally. I just. I just blank those those tweets when people are like, "Oh, wait till the end of the season. Don't get too cocky. Why? Why should I wait till the end of the season? If we don't win it, we don't win it. You get clipped up. Who cares? But it's about living in the moment and just enjoying it." embracing it and that's what football's about you don't wait until the final game of the season where it's all done and then you start celebrating just then you celebrate then as well of course but you celebrate as over the course of the season and this idea that arsenal fans are shameless for supporting man united fans and i'm the most shameless fan out there then i wasn't an arsenal fan yesterday i was a man united fan yesterday that was who i wanted that and i tell you what when that main who goal went in i thought oh my god they've done it they've done it and then one Bissaka. But still, we take it. We take it. <laughs> we will take it. And there's yeah. going to be, you know, awful weeks like that. And, you know, to your point earlier about playing first, second or third, you know, we go third this weekend. Man City will play Luton. Uh, Liverpool play, who did they play? Palace at home at Anfield. Uh, I think that's a 2.30 kickoff on the Sunday. And then we play Unai Emery's Aston Villa. Ah, I mean, Eric says in the chat, I enjoy by wanting us to win game by game. I get it. I do. I get it. There's a lot of fans that see the the bigger picture. There's some fans that just can't see beyond tomorrow. I get that as well. I really get it. But listen, it's going to be emotional. Um, Are we doing it, Faisal? Are we doing it? Come on. On the spot. How can you not say yes? (laughs) Yes. We are going to do it, man. I I, I feel sick admitting that. (laughs) But (laughs) <laughs> we are. I mean, Louise says, absolutely love being an Arsenal fan. Now, the memories we had last season, do you remember, Ro? Yeah. Beating United, um, Bournemouth, Reese Nelson. Bournemouth. Like, there were so many unbelievable moments. And then the heartbreak is devastatingly, you know, gut wrenching. Yeah. It's sickening. And, like, I'm, I'm, don't get me wrong, like, deep down, I'm really fearful of that. That, like, after such an amazing season where the metrics have been phenomenal and we're the best attacking team and the best defensive team out of possession and all that sort of stuff. It would be so sad to not win the league this year. And you wonder how, you know, how are we going to pick ourselves up again and go again next season? But I'm so encouraged. Like everything we see from Mikel, everything we see from from the way that this team is evolving, the way that he is evolving as a coach. I'm so encouraged, man. Like the next few years are going to be special. They're going to be on, special. It is. It, 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 we're in a period of domination that we're going to be doing under Mikel Arteta. He's not going anywhere. This Arsenal team's not going anywhere. But... I want to win it this year because of the Pep and Guardiola thing. That's why I want to win it so badly this year because it will be looked upon so special. All the narratives, all the trolling, you know, bottle top four, bottle the league, all this nonsense, and then to win it. What are people going to say then? What can you say? Nothing. It's going to happen. But the only thing that worries me is the fixture congestion. If it was just these games that we played and no other games, I'd be so, so, so confident. I'm confident now. In the back of my mind, is that is that is that sickening feeling of, is it too many games that we that we that we've got, and 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 how the volume of games within the short space of time? I mean, it's like you know we're playing tomorrow. We only played on Saturday, and then we're playing on Sat and Sunday, and then we're playing on Wednesday, then we're playing on the Saturday, and then we're playing on the Tuesday or Wednesday. Then we're playing. It's just relentless. But this is where we want to be, Faisal. You know how many times have we seen it over the years where we've, we've seen like Pep Guardiola and Jurgen Klopp teams. Go toe to toe. You admire it, but you are also jealous. Because like, I want to be that team. I want to be the team com- that team that competes for it. And here we are now. Embrace it. Enjoy it. You know, go, get lost in it. You know, it's 
That's what it's about. If you sound a bit deluded, you sound a bit deluded. Who cares? It's what football's about. You know, it's about enjoying it, about about loving your team. And yeah, oh, I want a pitching day to tell you what. If we win it, I'm. <laughs> <laughs> You're getting carried away now. I mean, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it is about how strong oh. your me- you know how's your metal basically how's your metal, going yeah. going into this run in. Oh, we've got some horrendous weekends ahead in terms of like nerves and trepidation and fear and hate watching. Yeah. And then we've got some unbelievable weekends ahead where we could go to our enemy and beat yeah. them at the lane again. We could go to Old Trafford, the champion section, and win it there. We could we could oh, be yeah. reminiscing about Everton on the last day of the yeah. season, like we did when we won the league so famously back in '98. Oh. I'm getting scared now. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. Do you know what? While you were saying now. that, I was like, <laughs> yeah. actually, oh, I, feel, no. I feel like I'm going to vomit. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if uh, I'm confident now. <laughs> this, is, this is really bad. Right. 2,900 of you watching. Thank you so much for all of your time. This has been a... Let me know in the chat. What did you think of tonight's format of show? Because it was uh, last minute. It was completely unplanned. I reached out to, to four buddies, as, as you guys know. And they all came on very kindly. We had that sort of rotating door. Everyone had sort of 10, 15 minutes to talk. Um, please let me know what you thought of tonight's format because we, we could do more of these things. Um, and I appreciate, obviously, all the chat. I'm going to sort of close just by bringing up a picture that I absolutely uh, uh, absolutely love. And, um, Ro, I guess it's just about trying to um, G up the truth, G up the emotions a bit more. Yeah. Uh, Oh, this is sick. <laughs> this team. Wait. Oh, my. That's so this good. This very special team is has given us so many amazing memories this season already. So many amazing memories last season. Everything that Mikel is doing with these boys, you see Declan Rice, you see Gabrielle, you see Kai Havertz, Nelly, Saka, Saliba. I fucking love these boys, man so much and i have no idea how the season is going to end like we might not win anything we might win the league title we might even go on and win the champions league fuck knows what's going to happen but you guys are in it with me with us it's been such an enjoyable season and i just i'm so ready i want to go to the emirates right now 947 yeah. in the uk i want to go there i want to sleep on the fucking street man and just get ready for it if you are at the emirates tomorrow bring everything bring your dinner bring your snack check bring your schnitzel bring your red kit bring your scarf Mikel Arteta's men we are fucking going man uh thank you so much for joining us tonight enjoy the rest of your night sleep if you can and uh, we will be back with a post-match phone in tomorrow night and we'll be back with a late night latte in the week uh look after yourselves take care it is bye for now